Well, it's 9 a.m. here in Las Vegas, and this is Cannabis Hotline. Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. And if you have any questions about growing cannabis or how to use cannabis for medical reasons or you're growing for medical reasons, whatever it is, I'm the Grow Boss. I have all of those answers. Um, apparently, I had everything ready except the position of my table. All right. The number is 184 Grow Boss. If you'd like to call me and talk about growing cannabis, if you have any questions about using cannabis medically, we can talk about that too. So, today's show is called Piggies and Preppers. Why? Because I'd like to go over a little bit of the customer behavior that comes through my store. And why some of you seem to get much better service than others. And we call you guys here at the store Piggies and Preppers. And I can already tell the type of success you're going to have just by your appearance when you come in my store. And that's an important thing because if you're the man bear pig that comes in wearing mandals and you smell, how can we possibly help you? We don't want to get anywhere near you. And if you're the guy we call Fiverr, who no matter what he buys wants $5 off, Literally, these Clonex gel things are like, like six bucks in the store, and this guy wants five off. I mean, it's at the point now where Chuck and I are under direct orders. I have issued a direct order that he is to get no discount. No discount. Why? Because there comes a point where you push too far and you don't get what you want. If you're one of the burpers, <laughs> Or the coffers, what was, that? <coughs> and you don't cover your mouth. We call you the piggies, and you're a counter guy because we have to make sure we stay behind the counter. See the counter at the front of my store? We have to make sure that we keep you on one side and that we stay as far away from you as possible. Why? <coughs> I don't know why. That probably felt gross just watching me do it through the YouTube let alone having you do it at my counter. <clears throat> oh, the smokers and the coppers. <laughs> Man, you gotta watch your manners. Those kind of people, well, let's just keep going with that because there's a list of stuff that we got. Um, let's see, who else do we have? Um, there are the geniuses, right? These are the guys who already know more than I do. And they're not, they come into the question, but they're not here to listen to the answer. You come into the question and then I tell you something and all you want to do is tell me what you read on the internet. Okay, check that box, can't help you because you can't listen. There are a lot of clues to the grower about looking at the person. And that's a big deal when you come in my store because if you're an eBay guy, and that's fine, you can shop on eBay, you don't have to buy from my store or the hydro stores, but just understand that when you tell me that you shop on eBay, you shouldn't look so surprised when I look at you and I tell you, well, perhaps you should ask the guy on eBay that you bought the equipment from. And then when you have the balls to look at me and tell me I'm a hydro store, you go to a grocery store, you don't ask them how to cook the food. So all I'm suggesting is that when you come to a hydro store, you have to keep it in some perspective. And that's a big deal, I think, because uh, people that come through a hydro store, historically, not so much anymore with the medical thing, but people who come through a hydro store typically tend to be 18 to 49 year old guys, just like me, who think they're gonna get something for nothing, just like I did when I was growing. And these are the guys that really can't hold down a job. They come in with, you know, plaid and stripes. They come in with ball draggers in, in shorts that are so old, you shouldn't be wearing them. They're around the house shorts. And the coffers and the piggies, oh my God. Listen, as the market's changed, so has, so has my clientele. I sold a $500 system with a couple of T5s to a 79-year-old lady who was trying to get her 86-year-old boyfriend off the pills. 
Listen, that lady drove up in a Lexus. She had a designer handbag hanging from her elbow. She was 79 years old. Maybe I'm old, but I mean, that lady was like a hot little package. I mean, she, you know what I mean? She was clean. She was prepper. She looked good. I have a lot of elderly female customers that come through my store. And I got to tell you, they knock it out of the fucking park. First, females always grow better than males because they don't think it's anything other than what it is. But more importantly, females tend to just leave the plants the fuck alone. They don't grow a brain. They don't do any research. They don't look at any advertising. They take the basic few products that I tell them to use and they do that and leave the plants the fuck alone. So what I can tell you already is that preppers have a much higher success rate than the piggies. And you have to ask yourself when you come into a hydro store, if you're a burper or <coughs> offer, or you're a super smart guy or an eBay shopper, you have to understand at the other side of that counter is some dude like me who probably already struggles with his customers because the bulk of them are piggies. And that's fine. There are some piggies that are successful growers too. But I'm telling you that the percentage of preppers that come through my store have a much higher success rate when they're growing. So while you guys are worried about spectrum and you guys are worried about which nutrients you're using and you guys are worried about what lights you're using and LED and heat and temp, AC and coolant and CO2 and all that other shit. <laughs> while you guys are worried about all that, I can already tell you that the statistical probability of whether you're going to succeed or fail when growing cannabis has already been sealed by your appearance. Because it's an 85-15 ratio and that's clear. Preppers have an 85% success rate and piggies have a 15% success rate. And I bet that's why piggies look the way they do. Because they don't have jobs, they don't have any responsibility, they don't have any, sorry, I don't mean any responsibility, I don't mean to take that away from you. Uh, you have families and jobs and all of that. What I meant was you don't have the obligation to be somewhere where you're not offensive. That's a big deal, because the more offensive you are, the less I want you in my store and the more I want you gone. Now, don't confuse calling you piggy and prepper with racist. There is Mexican, black, white, Asians in every category, in every category. There is no, <laughs> nationality does not involve with piggy and preppers. It does seem to involve how many people grind their front air dam on my, uh, on the parking stops in front of my store. It does seem to involve how, how <laughs> Piggies seem to grind their air dams on the front of the on the on the parking spot stops where preppers seem to understand that you only get the middle of the parking spot. So anyway, piggies and preppers, these are the things that you really need to know when you come in my store or you're going to start growing. Which one are you, piggy or prepper? All right, I'm the grow boss. Three days a week, I'm a piggy. Four days a week, I'm a prepper. And if you have any questions, you can call 84 Grow Boss. I'm here to answer your cannabis questions. Otherwise, I'm gonna just keep bitching about customers for the next hour. I think I got enough material to do it. <laughs> in fact, um, let me. In fact, I'm gonna, I'm gonna read you a letter that I got from somebody this week and uh, I'm just gonna read you a letter grow boss I came into your store last month in st and instead of listening to my nonsense which I now realize is all it was you gave me your grow book I've read your grow book twice since then taken notes and tried to delete everything the internet told me before I read it I've also begun researching all of your videos. Sorry, I know where the letter ends up. I've also begun researching all your videos to reinforce the knowledge. On the first, I'm coming into your store with $500 to purchase the components you tell me to start my first grow. I would really like a 60 day or 30 day rotation with one pound dry weight every harvest. I realize that $500 will most likely not be enough to get this set up immediately. 
I'm able to put four to five hundred dollars a month toward achieving that goal. Letting you know that the knowledge I have gained from your book and my and my growing goals is only partly why I'm emailing you. Hey, 310, I'll get to you in a sec. Let me uh, finish up this and I'll get to you in a sec. Letting you know that the knowledge I have gained from your book and my growing goals is only partly why I'm emailing you. I'm a disabled vet. This medicine makes it so I don't have to take six different pills every morning. It makes it so that my family is able to have a father instead of the zombie. The knowledge you have provided me and continue to provide me is the integral key for me to produce my own medicine and maintain a mostly normal lifestyle. I wanted to thank you, the way you talk and write, being blunt about the reality of failure and why it happens, the no-nonsense speech that speaks to me. I fully believe had I not gone to your store, I would be farming salt right now and instead of waiting to build a correct and functional candy garden. The salt farmer candy garden are referenced to my books. But I do want to say that when he came back into the store a week early and I gave that guy a smoking deal. I mean, why not? Here's a vet who reached out and took the time to thank me. I spent all the time he and his wife needed to make sure that he got that medicine and he can grow it. I mean, think about the position this guy's in. Active combat, PTSD, six pills, and the government who sent him to war doesn't do everything possible to make sure they brought him home and gave him the best lifestyle possible. And fully the government, both sending our kids to war, sending our civilians to war, and not making sure that they're taken care of when they come back. It's not my job. You send him to war. You make sure he's safe when he comes back. Now, as a citizen, it's my job to make sure that I reach out to somebody like this and I do whatever I can to help somebody like this because, well, if the burden falls to you and you can, then you must accept the responsibility. And I'm just suggesting that if each of us find ways to accept responsibility and help people like this, then I, I suspect we would all be paying it forward in a different kind of a way. Now, this is a difficult thing to read. I mean, this guy came in and he got a hug. I, I'm, I'm, I admire this individual and could I go back in time? I would enlist in the army. I encouraged both my kids, neither did, but I encouraged both my kids to enlist in the military, even if you don't serve in a war. I think America could be much stronger if we all started from a better point and we all kind of work together to be better as well. And while that may be a little too political for this show, it is my show. And you have to ask yourself, well, who would you help? The piggy coffer <coughs> guy <coughs> on the other side of the counter? Or somebody who takes the time to write me a thank you note? <coughs> I'm just saying that when you come to the hydro store, something you may want to consider is how you interact with the people at the store because you're there for their information. Because the guys who grow good, man, they never come in and brag. They're really quiet. They come in and they get their shit and they go. Why? Because they're not having any problems. Everything is going good. And they're the type of person that's a prepper. Now, they may not be the you know typical prepper prepper, but I got to tell you, the good growers, they rarely come in like the coffers and the hackers and the man bear pigs and the stinkers. All right. Let me go ahead and take a call and I'll get more into the piggies and preppers in a minute. Hey, you are on with the Grove. Hello. Hello. What is it that I can do for you? I cannot. Grove Boss, how are you doing today? You sound extraordinarily familiar. How come? <laughs> I don't. Maybe because we got a lot in common. I'm a seasoned grower, maybe. Ah, okay. I thought maybe you were one <clears> of the I got a question. Yes, I got sir. a question for you. What can I do for you? Yes. Uh, that light mover. The light mover. I want to know, what do you really think about that light mover? I, you know, I told you I'm a seasoned grower, so I, I'm i one of the ones who had four lights in the room, one room, and I took it out, took two of them out, and put the 
mover in the room and <clears throat> I got scared. I'm talking about I don't I, I didn't wait to see the outcome. <clears throat> I got scared. I got scared. Okay. I wanna know what you should think. I think I wanna know what you got scared of. <laughs> what scared you? I'm t- I, you know when when you used to see it every day, it wasn't moving like it usually moved. I didn't see the reaction like I usually see my reaction off my four lights. I, I, I panicked. I got scared and threw my two lights back up, and, and then it made it stretch back out. They was, they was into budding, but it made it start stretching. It went back into the stretch mode. Okay. All right. So I will show you exactly what I think of light movers and how to use them because like anything else you have to use them properly and there are conditions and limitations that you have to be aware of and so one of the conditions is the trick about a light mover oh you know what you're gonna have to turn your computer down you got me up on something i can hear there's somebody calling me okay no i don't even have a computer on i'm just on the phone okay there was somebody probably trying to call me, maybe. Okay. So, this is the chapter I have on my book about light movers. And this is how they work. They take the same amount of light and they spread it out over a greater area. And because they spread the light out over a greater area, your job is to make sure that they're a little closer. So, let's say you finished a 5x5 five five space. So let's say you finished a 5x5 space, and you finished a scrog, and it was two feet deep of bud. So you finished, you know, bud in every top, 5x5, two feet deep. 5x5 equals 25 square feet. And if we were to extend this to a 4x6 instead of a 5x5, a 4x6 would be 24 square feet. So what you would do is you would run a thousand watt on a four by eight. A four by eight is 32 square feet and 32 square feet is just a little more than 25. But that's, that's the footprint. That's how you get 25% more weight. What you also need to do is fill up the garden with 25% more plant. So if you were at two by six and you go to two by eight, you would be at more plant. The next component is when we look at the garden sideways, if you had if you had a bunch of tops, so here's your you know, here's your canopy, you got some legs, right? But here's your canopy with a bunch of tops in every hole. What you would do is instead of putting your hood at four feet and using a supersized hood, what you would do is you would get a smaller hood and you would run it at three feet away by running it three feet away where this might have penetrated to here this hood will penetrate all the way down and it will move you'll get a little more light on the plant and then you move the light away now there's one more thing you need to be aware of about plants there are a couple of different types of plants one type of plant is just like cannabis where it takes the sunlight and it absorbs it and photosynthesizes it and then there are the c4 plants and these are things like cactuses where they close their stomas during the day they continue to absorb photons they process process them during the day but they don't release the metabolic co2 until nighttime that's when they open up their pores and cactus do that obviously because they don't want to lose their moisture during the day Now, there's a small amount of buffer when it comes to regular photosynthesizing plants. They can absorb 105% worth of light as long as the light moves away and then they can finish processing the light that they've absorbed down to the point where when the light brings the light back, then it can absorb the light again. But what you can't do is you can't give them 105% light all the way. So think of it like the driving into difference between a four cylinder and an eight cylinder. In a four cylinder, you want those RPMs. You've got to keep the car peppy. Nee, 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 nee. In an eight cylinder, torquey on the low end. Both of them are vehicles. Both have engines. Both have you know doors and tires, and they're an automobile. And yet you you use them in a couple of different ways, even though you're looking for the end product. So let me. 
let me give you an example of the math. Um, oh, I know. Okay, so we can do this. Let's. Uh, let me give you a quick example. We want um, eBay. Well, I want eBay. Okay. Okay. And one more thing, Grandpa. Okay. So you said, so you, are, are you telling me that if you got a light mover, because you know I told you I didn't have four lights for years, and I don't, I don't, I don't let them up and down. They stationary up. So you telling me with a light mover, I can let my light down on them a little bit more closer. That's the whole point. Be one thousand watts in that. Yeah, I understand. But because you're moving it off the plant, so physically. What you would end up doing is the light would be here, then you would put the light here, then you would put the light here. When the light's here, it is not here. And with a one minute delay that the light rail light mover has on it, this might take one minute to travel plus a one minute delay plus travel time, these plants, this part of the canopy, may not see light for two minutes. Um, when you, let me, I'll give you a, I'll show you a, let's see. I made a series called 99 Plants with the Bushmaster. And in all of these episodes, we have this veg where the Bushmaster's vegging and yeah, oh. I, I, yes sir I saw that video that's what made me call you um too much light I saw <clears throat> I think I yeah a lot of times what I have to do is what I try to do is I just try to put this in perspective for you so here's a video where mm -hmm. I'm standing in front of a 10 week veg with a thousand watt light on a light mover. This isn't yes, and I saw this video. Okay, now I have. I saw this video, and this is the video. And, and, and matter of fact, I got that exact room. I think my room is that exact size. But I got my light on a six foot mover instead of a four foot. Mine on a six foot. Okay, so I'll tell you that while I have not published how this round turned now this is in the bushmaster's garden and while i have not published the last two the last two episodes i will tell you that these plants mm -hmm. they're big they also got a little too big if you were doing an indoor grow and while i don't want to spoiler alert how it turns out um he grew them too big and wispy for an outdoor grow so what I would like to suggest is, this is what a thousand watt light is capable of growing in 10 weeks. That doesn't mean you have to do it. You can modify this with, let's say, 10 plants, vegged for six or eight weeks, and you would probably get an increase in the density, and by density I mean the space between the nodes, but this is what a thousand watt light is capable of producing. I mean, that's an 8 by 10 space with 25 foot plants. And then look at, I mean, the lights, that light's two and a half feet away. And when you look at the plants on the top, you can see that they're not, they're getting too much light. And that back here, oh, right here in the middle, he doesn't move the light far enough. Like this light here should have been moved edge to edge of that garden. But more importantly, I would like to take a sec and I would like to point out one more thing. When you look at this picture, this hood is a two by three hood. This hood, this hood is a two by two hood. If you have a, if you have a two by three hood, um, let's see, if you have a two by, and this is just some straight math for you. Like, I'm not even gonna tell you what's best. Okay. I'm just gonna do the math and then we'll see what you think is best. If you have a two by two hood, and this is a, this is a thousand watt light, you have four square feet of hood. So you have 250 watts per square foot of hood. 
That's just straight math. If you have a two by three hood, like a Raptor, like uh, something, something like this, if you have one of these big ass hoods, let's just say these things are two by three. If a two by three hood with a thousand watt light, if this equals six square feet, then you're now getting what 100 divided by six what 150 600 900 so like 175 watts per square foot 600 150 36 um 150 hang on a sec, nine okay close enough so now you're at 175 watts per square foot now, if you were to take 175 watts per square foot and you were to do a thousand watt in a five by five, you would have to divide 175 by five. You'd have to divide 175 by, by 25 square feet. Now, if you do a four by eight, you would have to divide, if you did a four by eight space, same light on a light mover, now you would be at 32 square feet. So you could see that where this was divided by 25 square feet and your answer would be like 70 watts per square foot. If you divided it by 35, you're closer to 50 watts. So each time we take the same light and we spread it out over a greater area, we decrease the watts. Now, when we look at the Nickel City lights that I'm using, for the bad boy lights that I'm using for the great root race. When we look at those things, in, in case of, in this, it's a, it's a four by eight T5. And if we take, if we look at this, this thing equals 400 watts. So if we do the four by, they have a 16 bulb T5, that would be 800 watts. So if we did four by 20 bulbs, now that's a thousand watts so 20 bolts uh, now we're talking about the same amount of watts a four by eight bulb um four by eight equals two by four in terms of size it's two feet wide four feet long that's eight square feet if we had 20 of those then we'd have two and a half so this would actually be five by four so if we did, if we use the T5, we would end up with 20 square feet divided by a thousand watts. So now this thousand watts over 20 square feet, like we've literally have 50 watts. So I don't particularly care if you do a thousand watt light on a light mover when a four by eight space with a little hood, small hood, small hood. This is a small hood. I don't care if you do that because what we're talking about is about 50 watts per square foot. That's why I tell you LEDs are killer because if you look at an LED and you have a thousand watt LED, if that thing is literally two by two, then you have a thousand watts in a four square foot space and that is remarkably like this and that is an enormous amount of light to dump on one section of the plant that's why when i tell you guys you do a thousand watt with the scrog you do a big hood and you do it in a five by five space with no mover if you're going to do a mover you're going to want a small hood think about it like a flashlight you crank it hard over one way and the light goes really far you crank it hard over the other way and the light goes really wide but not as far. And that's why in the beginning of the book, because all we're talking about is a thousand watts worth of fuel. I don't care how you divide that thousand watts up, but you have to consider if you have a wide hood, then you are going to get a shallow canopy and more plants with a shorter veg. If you have a small hood, you are going to grow fewer, bigger plants with a longer veg. That's the different shape. That's the shape between the two hoods. Because if you have a big hood and tall plants, you have effectively wasted all this light. If you have a tall plant, and this should technically, I guess, be a scrog. So if you have like this down here, if you have a scrog with a narrow hood, then you're missing all this plant with the light. 
Now, because I tell you guys, plant and yield, yield and and light are hand in hand. Yield is based on light. It's our job to consume all of the fuel, that's the light, with the leaf of the plant. So if you have, you have a choice now. You have to drive a, a, a light, a thousand watt light, on a light mover like a four cylinder. You put it a little closer. You put it. You have to do it like a light mover. You put the light physically a little closer to the plant because you're going to physically move it off the plant. And then, like, think about it like a cloud between you and the sun. You, your skin might be hot as fuck, and then the cloud goes between you and the sun. The sun is still out, the air is still the same temperature, and yet suddenly you are remarkably cooler. Like turning over at the beach when you're getting a suntan, yeah. suddenly you're remarkably cooler. It's your job to put the light a little closer, such that the plant does not heat up any more than it did before, and you have to extend you have to extend the canopy such that your light takes your plants can absorb it now this picture here with the arc this is how i describe to you that there is not enough delay not enough delay and that's because if the middle grows bigger than the edges that's because the middle gets twice the light and that's because if you look at one end, so you start at one end, you go through the middle to the other end, then you go through the middle again on the way back. So one complete pass and the middle gets twice the light. One for the end, one for the middle, one for the other end, one for the middle, and you're back at the end again. So to do one complete pass, the middle gets twice the light. So in this particular case, you would increase the delay of your light mover to get a greater growth at the edges. And when your canopy looks like this, that's how you know <clears throat> you're using the light mover properly. Now, I, I would like to make, after I've said all that, I would like to give one caveat, and that's this. Good growers with four lights, the good growers that use the lights with no movers, and you already know it doesn't matter about the nutrients, it doesn't matter about which ones, none of that. The good growers that already have CO2 and run an AC that's sealed in the room, they tend to be scared of changing because you don't want less. You don't want the buds to change. The guys who are looking to change, oh, right. guys, I'm going to do that. Right. I got this big idea. I'm going to switch nutrients. <laughs> These are the guys that don't have your type of success. And when I talk about piggies and preppers, right. the guys who have your type of success don't ever have the same kind of questions that the guys who are failing have. The guys who are failing think switching nutrients is gonna help. The guys who are succeeding are afraid of switching. So first, let me say congratulations, sir, to you. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that show where it was, that show scared me. That mover, and I told you once, I stopped it from moving, my plants went back into stretch mode. That, that really scared me. Okay. So let me ask you then how you did this, because there are technically two ways. You could have taken two lights out of your garden, because if you had four 1000s, you had four five by five spaces. So you could have removed two lights mm -hmm. and sent the remaining two back and forth. Now, what I tell you is adding a light mover is 25% <clears throat> because you can put the light closer. If you if you took two lights out and then moved the other two, then you went from 4,000 to 2,500. 2,000 for the lights plus 25% more for moving them. If you went from 4,000 watts down to 250, then yes, you would have had a big 1,500 watt difference. However, if you took all four lights and moved them like this, you would have had to change the canopy shape beneath it. So if you just removed lights and then moved them, you would have had twice the canopy, two five by five spaces under each of the lights. So you'd have five by 10. And that would have been too much for 2000 watts on light movers. 
it would have been more appropriate to do four by eights because five by 10 is 50 square feet, four by eight is 32 square feet. And 18 square feet is more than half an increase. So let me ask, how did you actually modify your room? Tell me what you did. Okay. I, first of all, like you said, I had to go the long way. I had to change my plants the long way with the uh, light mover because I had them. They was going, I, I, I want to say east. <laughs> they was facing east. I had to, when we put the light mover in, I had to switch everything the long way, okay. which made me a walking row. I got a... Now I got a row that I can walk on the side of them and everything now with the light move. The light move was going to make my life more easier. I, I, I kid you not. It was going to bring the temperature down in the room. I just got scared. It was going to bring That's all it was. I mean, it, I mean, it, it was only going to bring the temperature down if you decrease the total light. So again, did you move two lights on each light mover or did you take two out of the room? No, I took two out of the room. Which I back now because I got scared, but I took two out of the room, took two completely down, because with the light movers I didn't need them. I didn't need the space because that six foot light mover it covered all the space. I mean every bit of the space. It did the job, but I got scared. Okay, but I oh, it covered every bit of that. I had every bit of cover. Okay, let me ask, how big is your hood? And one more thing I didn't do. What? Oh, that's why I was just going to tell you one more thing. I, I just heard you say. On one of them, I got the regular hood. On the other one, I got the king hood, the big wing. Okay. Because, you know, I thought that, hey, more light. That's what I had. But remember, I do got the other two short ones, like you said. I got two short ones. That Since I just got that information from you, I'm going to switch and put the two short ones on now. Because I did have the king wing on, the long one, the big long one. Okay. Um. You I, you know I, the case. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. I know exactly what you're talking about. So what I would like to suggest is uh, there's a couple of things that happened that um, that I suspect um, you could have uh, done better. No, that's not, I don't want to say it like that. I want to say I suspect you could have been you could have used the equipment more appropriately. Let me let me say that you had 4000 watts and then what you did was you went to 2000 watts plus a mover. Now, mm -hmm. <laughs> hang on one sec. My, uh, my vape is done. So you went from 4000 watts. You know, the vape doesn't get you as high, but <laughs> but it does stop, it does take the burn out of it. Okay. So 2000 watts plus a mover, you yeah. effectively had 2500 watts worth of light. So you went from 4500, you decreased it by 1500 watts. So let's just say that you, you decrease it. I, I, I'm doing this because I want to show you a little more math. And the math is this, okay. um, each of your spaces was five by five. So you had one, you had supersized hoods. So you were dividing the light up and you had hoods over each one. So you had four lights, but then you switched to a light mover and you put one over each space and you got yourself that walk row. Now, I, I know it's a silly thing, but I'd like to point out to everybody listening and everybody forever from now who's going to listen. This guy was excited for a row to walk between his plants. Why? Because when you're that <laughs> fucking good, getting between your plants is a problem. It's the ones that are over water and your light's too close and you can't imagine having so much plant. But the reality is there comes this point where too much plant is a problem. And again, all of the little things you do just point to you being such a talented grower. So I just wanted to say again, congratulations on knocking it out of the park, dude. Okay. So what you did was, you, yes, sir. What you did was you went from 2,000 watts in this space down to 1,000 on a light mover, which is 1,250 watts. So you decreased almost 30 30 percent of the light. There was a 30 percent decrease in the light, but you did not decrease the space. Now what I'm suggesting is if you're going to do 1,000 watt plus a light mover that you're going to do it in a four by eight space, which equals 32 square feet. 
Now we know what happens when the Bushmaster did it in this. It got, it was too much. So if we do 42 and then we do five by 10, then we equal 50 square feet. So not only did you decrease the light, but you did not decrease the space. So you had a hood. The original hood was supersized and it was appropriate for a big space. But because you left the space five wide instead of four, and because you move this light, instead of getting the smaller two by two hood, you were going to have the same amount of light spread out over such a greater space that you were not going to ever get the results you were looking for. What I might have suggested was instead of doing this and changing it to one light, I would have suggested that you put two lights on the mover and you add three feet worth of plant at the end. See, <laughs> this is a rare piece of advice I'm going to give. I'm going to give you a rare piece of advice because most of the time people are failing. 85% of growers are failing. So the piece of advice that I'm going to give you was this. You were never going to be happy with a light rail because you decreased your total light. And because you're a good grower, when you decrease your total light, it's like going from a V8 to a four cylinder. Mm, I had a I had a high horsepower V8, my friend, and I started driving a Honda. And it is a it is while a spectacular vehicle, it is an entirely different situation. And because you went from 4,000 watts to 2,500 with an inappropriate hood and an inappropriate space, you spread the light out over too far a space. Now, I'm going to give you one more example. Hang on. Sorry, what's the rule? Never put the bong near the edge. Oh, yeah. How many have I broken before I learned never put the bong oh. near the edge? Okay, so this is from the Great Root Race. This is, it's day 16, and while I won't tell you what's in the mystery tray, even though you probably already know this is a green pad, the green pad juniors for the gels, um, this is 16 days old. And I'll admit to one thing on this tray. What I do, because when you look at the system that it's in, you can see that all the trays have the light sort of running down the middle. So when I water these, I take the biggest ones from the middle and I move them to the edges and I bring the smaller ones from the edges <clears throat> and I put them in the middle. Why do I do this? Because I'm trying to even out the canopy. Now, when I'm trying to keep the canopy even, it's because I, I want to show you as part of the pictures that all of them are even. And when I show you the, the flyover or I show you how fast the roots are growing in this one, I'm more focused on, I want you to see the volume of that canopy. In your garden, the light mover would be effectively be the same thing. So if you had this much space with a thousand watt light, and then you would double that space, but you only went from 1,000 watts to 1,250, everything would be a little bit smaller because you went from 2,000 watts down to 1,250 watts. And as I, these ones, you see they're bigger on the outside. You can see these ones are curving in. These ones are going straight up. And that's because this has the correct amount of light and this is looking for more. So I know I'm not killing my basil starts with too much light. And they really do smell good. And I'm about to release a six part video called The Great Root Race. And in that, I'm gonna show you guys the difference between all the products. In the Great, okay. in the great Root Race, what I do is we test all of these products that you see and we have a control tray that doesn't get anything. So you can literally see the difference between nothing, one thing and using 
this, 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 and of course the two mystery trays. So we're filming all that right now, and that's all part of it. But you see how it dips in the middle, and you see how I take the smaller, the bigger plants, and I move them to the outside, and I take the smaller ones, and I move them in the middle. And I'm showing you that because mm -hmm. this is why I'm showing you that. Because if you grow the dome shape, you're not using your fuel effectively. And what I mean by that is, hey, you might be able to drive in the fast lane at 85 in second gear, but why? Why would you do that when it's appropriate to be in six, 6,000 RPMs lower and fuel mileage at like 50% more? So you could drive in second and run your gears out and blast that fuel, or you could drive at a lower RPM and a higher gear. Same lane, same speed. What changes is your effective capability, like NASCAR. All the cars are the same, but the drivers make the same vehicle all the difference in the world. Well, maybe just a few seconds between you know, in the front of the pack. But again, it's the difference in the driver. And that's why in your situation, I would have said you should have kept both lights and ran them out the edge. You know, as long as I got you on the phone, let me ask you this, are you adding CO2? Oh, yes. Okay, tell me about how you- Oh, air, yes. Tell me about how you air condition the room. How do you do it? Well, I have an air conditioning room. Okay. I got an air conditioning room that sits on 75, uh, 75. Okay. A little tell room me, cooler. Tell me about the air conditioner. Is it a window unit? Is it, what is it? It's a window unit. It's a window unit. I got a small little window unit. Uh, go ahead. No, 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 no. I'm, no. How much was the window unit? Uh, tell me how much did I pay for it? Yeah. I think like, uh, well, this probably be the second one I didn't get. The first one lasts about three years, <laughs> so I I think about uh, two hundred dollars. Okay. <clears throat> the reason that I ask is, um, I, I I always can tell good growers have a very specific chain of events that they do. They don't deviate, and and a lot of the flack that I get, a lot of the comments that I get on the videos are that. Oh, girl boss, you don't know shit. There's lots of ways to grow. And what I always tell you guys is, yeah, there are lots of ways to grow, but there are very few ways to grow correctly. And here's a dude who has a yes. garden that's exactly the way I describe it. It's sealed. It's added CO2. He's got all of his lights in the room. His biggest problem was that he didn't have a walkway. You heard how happy he was when he when he could walk between his plants. You hear him laughing on the phone. Yeah. That's why I tell Yeah, that you. walkway was like very good, man. That was like Christmas <laughs> being able to walk through it. I ain't playing. That's why I tell you guys, good growers only have two complaints. Their girlfriends hate trimming, and their plants got too big for the light. Sir, is there a... Woo -hoo -hoo! Woo -hoo! My wife is back there trimming right now! <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> yes. yes, she hates trimming. Oh, my and you son hates trimming. I got my 22-year-old son. He hates trimming. <clears throat> oh, yes. Yes, I've been doing it for years. That's what I'm telling you. That's why I was asking about this light. That light, that light mover, you know, I... That was something new. So, are you are you telling me that I need to just go back to my four lights and forget the light mover, or just hang the two lights on the end of the, just get two on the end, one on one end, one on the other? That's what you're telling me. Um, I'm suggesting that you have very little room for improvement. Let's start there. The only mm -hmm. way that you could improve okay. upon this garden, there, sorry, there is no way to improve upon this garden unless we increase light because I'm not going to help you with nutrients. I'm not gonna help you with, with watering. I'm not, I don't have to tell you that you have- Yeah, I don't need no help with that, go ahead. So the only thing you could do would be to add two light movers to all four lights. The only thing that you could do yeah. would be to add two light movers, hang, hang two lights off each one. So you now have essentially, you now have Four thousand gotcha. watts. You'll have four thousand mm -hmm. watts. But they're moving. Right. 
and if 4,000 watts plus a light rail light mover if that equals 25%, then you now have 5,000 watts. But because you have CO2, that's 25%. You now have 6,250 watts, even though I'm writing 6,000 watts here. So you now have 6,000 watts. I would like to make the observation again that you, in your position, the only way to take advantage of literally 50% more light and literally by having two light movers and co2 you effectively have more light and i'm i'm going to just it's always awkward when i do this like i'm about to open up my book and i'm about to cite an example i'm about to quote myself and that's always like uh you know oh shit. of course it sounds like he knows what he's talking about he's quoting himself however i always go back to this formula yield is based on three things how much light you have how healthy your plants are and how full your garden is because if you have a half full garden of sick shitty plants doesn't matter how much light you have so let's just say your plants are 100 percent healthy and your garden is 100 percent full and you have 4,000 watts then you should expect a pound and a half per thousand you know you'd be at six pounds the problem is, is if you add, change this number to 600, but you don't increase the canopy volume, then you're only going to have 75%. And what I mean by that is, is if you increase the light, because you have 1,000 watts plus light mover plus CO2, you would now have, instead of 4,000, you would now have 6,000 watts. At 6,000 watts, you have to have 50% more canopy and if we go back here if you want 50% more yield if you have two five by five spaces and you know that 1000 watts goes over a five by five space then if you want 25% more or 50% more because you have a light mover and co2 then you're going to need two five by fives almost plus another five by five so two light movers and this is i mean you could grow the canopy a little thicker or you could extend it don't care which one i'm just saying that if you want 50 percent more weight because you have co2 and a light mover you're going to need 50 percent more canopy whether it be this way or this way see what i'm saying like, right yeah you would have to hand i'm looking wife. at you i see what you're saying you would have to hand your wife 50% more bud. She can't. She didn't hear me say that, did she? No, she, she's working. <laughs> Dude, at some point during this conversation, you're going to have to tell us how you've kept her trimming for so long. Yeah, that's amazing. Oh, man. Uh, well, well, one thing is, like you say, don't never think you love learned everything. You know, I thought I knew everything until I met the grow boss. I thought I knew the science of it until I saw the grow boss. I done looked on YouTube videos and laughed at people for so long. And I mean, I'm just laughing. I'm talking about the people who, and they got millions of views, millions of views, and the shit is wrong. I'm like, I can't believe this. I can't believe this. Ran upon one of your videos. You broke something down for me. I ran down to the basement. And I was like, this man is good. I've been watching you ever since. I appreciate that. Um, let's do this. Send me an email, and I will hook you up with something. I'm going to go ahead, and, and let me get back to the show. I totally appreciate the okay. call. Thank you so much. Okay, we will do. All right. So I'm the Grow Boss. I write the grow book and equipment guide. And if you have questions about growing, you can always call 84 Grow Boss and I'll answer them if I answer your call and I'm on the air. So we were talking earlier about piggies and preppers and it was fortuitous. It almost seemed like it was set up, but it wasn't. It was fortuitous. And one of the reasons that I can say that is I can pretty much be sure that we can judge the next caller based on piggy and preppy, preppy too. Why? Because that's how we judge most of the customers at the store, piggies and preppies. And that's why I can always tell you guys, good growers only have two problems. Old ladies hate trimming, plants got too big for the light. Let me take this call. 
Hey, this is the Grow Boss. What can we do? What can I do today? Hey, Grow Boss, how you doing? Hey. Um, I'd like to have have a little help. Uh, I'm a personal user, um, new to this, and have some questions about LED. Okay, do you have something on in the background? Yes, and I just muted it. Oh, Sorry okay. about that. All right, no, I got you. Okay, so what is it, fellow user, that I can help you with? Well, I'm growing, I'm growing a small closet in my bedroom. Uh, it's, four, it's like three and a half feet by five feet. I go on a DWC. Uh, I have a 600 watt LED. Uh, and I just wanted to see if, I don't think I can, but uh, this whole thing about shifting, you know, shifting gears, which your which okay. your plan as it grows. I I don't have anything. I don't have a, a dimmer, but I'm able to control the red, white, and, and uh, blue. And also, um, usually I will start off with a small little compact uh, fluorescent uh, light, and then try to go. But I don't know. I'm sure I'm screwing up. Whatever you think, you can. Point me to. Okay. Have you ever watched any of my videos before? Yes, I do. And that's why this whole thing about shifting gears is exactly what I'm, I'm calling on. Okay. Have you ever watched any of my videos that include my opinion of LEDs? Oh, yeah. Uh, it's kind of funny. <laughs> uh, early on in your earlier videos, uh, the reason I got my 600-watt LEDs, because you said that's the minimum I'll need to get nice, dense buds. But later on, I ended up finding out that if I would have waited, I would have gotten that kind LED. But you know what? I spend the money. It's here. Let me use it. It's personal. Okay. Unless you think I need to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so let me, let me just make this observation. How many watts of electricity does it actually draw? Uh, I think, um, I think it's like 300, uh, or some, some around there. Okay. 340, some, I'm not exactly sure. Okay. So let me ask you, you, you freely say that this 300 watt LED acts like a 600 watt light. And you say that you know that you want 600 watt minimum for hydro, so you've been paying attention. And you know that I say a 600 watt light technically equals a four by four space. So is this light dimmable? Mm -hmm. No. I'm sorry, yes or no? It's not. Okay. So no, it's not. Okay, so you're always at 600 watts. So you're always at 100%. Mm -hmm. So what I'd like yeah. to do is... I'd Although, like to... I... Go on. Can I interject something real yeah, quick? Yeah, yeah. I, I can control the, the, the spectrum. I mean, as far as... The, uh, I can turn off the red and blue and just run white or any of the, or whatever, or run all three at a time. So it may so it is dimmable. You can turn off you can turn off two colors and leave one on. So it's a two four yes. six hundred watt light because I tell you because spectrum spectrums are running. Oh. Okay. Oh, okay. So, I didn't think of that way. See what I'm Got saying? it. Okay. So let yeah. me let me ask you this question before we even begin the actual math of doing this. Do you believe that you're getting? 600 watts worth of light from 300 watts worth of electricity because that's what you claim so are you getting 600 watts worth of light like let's say an hps 600 watt light are you getting 600 watts worth of light from your led it, it's difficult for me to say that without really being you know seeing what is out there but I would have to say, once I got this light, man, I got a lot more bud. <laughs> okay. So let's put a number on it, because when you started the phone call, you freely said, I have a 600-watt mm -hmm. light. And now that I put it to you, you've changed the tone and said, well, I'm not sure if it really is. Mm -hmm. But we started off where it was. So let's, let's talk about that. If it's not truly a 600-watt, 
I mean, you bought an LED, right? Because you're going to get twice the light for less heat. So let's just talk mm-hmm. about, is it really twice the light? You tell me. I'm not even going to... I mean, they put 600 on the well, box. You call well, it I, well, it's hard... You know what? It's hard to say because I'm such a such a novice at this, and I was having so much issues with growing uh, uh, growing pot. But truly, it's like there's too many variables for me to sit back and say yes or no. Because along with getting the light, I also started following what you were saying, and literally, I'm growing like almost three times of what I was getting before. But I know I'm still not getting the full amount. You know, you understand what I'm trying to say? Yes, sir. So, let's talk about, let's, let's just assume that, you're, that this light is 600 watts worth of light. So, I'm going to go, based on the fact that you purchased this light, so you are going to get 600 watts worth of results. A 600 watt, just before mm-hmm. you even tell me what you did, 600 watt equals 4 by 4 with 1 pound yield. Mm-hmm. 600 watt equals four by four, one pound yield. So you had said you had a three by five closet, so you have enough space. So let me ask you this. How many plants do you have? Mm-hmm. I just grow one at a time. Okay. So that, uh, okay. Plant count one. How long do you veg for? Oh, uh, you know, I, I, now I try to veg like no more than four weeks because I don't want it to get too big. And running okay. into the light. Okay. So, so that very statement lets me know that you completely understand the goal. So I'm going to switch this to this because there are very few people that have that kind of success. So let me ask you, when you say, um, when you say grow them too big, at the end of veg, describe to me how big your plant is. <laughs> It's pretty big. Uh, I have problems trying to change the DWC, uh, change the buckets. Okay. Um, is it, is it three so I can't. I can't still. Still about three by three. Well, yeah. Um, I'm trying to think. It's it's filling about let's say three at the end of it, like maybe. Uh, hmm. Most of the closet, I'll say. So uh, three by three. It's a big deal difference. I thought it was more like three by four, something like that. Okay. It's just the branches and stuff is going everywhere. It's kind of hard to tell. Okay. That's okay. You, you, you really are in this narrow band where I'm feeling more and more confident about what I'm about to tell you. Because usually I just stop and I just beat up on LEDs and DWC because 50% of the calls mm. that call my outline are DWC with LEDs. But you are really getting, you, you really have switched my, switched my initial theory to one of far more success. So, um, so I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to ask, how long are the buds when you're done flowering? Somewhere kind of, somewhere kind of along. Um, Oh my gosh, I, I'm sorry, it's just, I'm kind of blanking right now, but I'll yeah, say one foot, two foot. there's some pretty good ones. I, it's, it's, hmm? One foot, two foot. Uh, I may have, I may, I may have like maybe a foot and a half or so, maybe, maybe a couple of direct in the middle or so, maybe, maybe two feet. Okay. But then again, I have some others that is like crap, you know, so, okay. and again, you know what, this might be typical, I just don't know. Um. I've been doing most of this stuff on my own, so I, I don't have too many friends to grow this stuff. Okay, that's okay. Listen, I, I'm you've you've convinced me that you're winning. So I all in a lot of cases huh? I have to I have to help people by telling them to do less. In a few cases, I have to help people by helping them be more finesse instead of do less. And so in your case, I'm feeling more finesse than do less. So so let me just ask now, wow. what is your yield? That's the thing that gets me. Uh, I'm not hitting the, the pound uh, at all. I, what is although I have to admit, I do, I do not hit the pound yet. I do kind of smoke some of the stuff before it's there. So I would say probably eight ounces. 
Okay, so when you're all finished and it's dried, you end up with eight ounces. So you're ending up with yeah. with one with one half of what you're supposed to, which is you're supposed to, okay. Exactly. All right. Um the bud that you have, how does it smell? You know, it doesn't smell like that strong, stinky stuff that, you know, when you go to when I go to the shop. Okay. You know, um, but when I grind it up or whatever, you know, I kind of it's kind of there. Okay. Okay, I've 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 solved this one, um, for you. Okay. Huh. Because you did not present any grow problems to me, then I'm going to have to say that um, I'm not going to offer you any anything in terms of growing. What I'm going to offer you is one of finesse. The first thing I'm going to suggest is that your 300 watt light is a 450. Stop thinking of it as a 600. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna decrease in your mind that the LED is a 450. Now, that means you should be getting 12 ounces okay. instead of 16, okay? The next thing that... Oh. The next thing that I'm going to suggest is that you might have to raise your light a little because the buds in the middle are different than the buds at the end. So if your buds in the middle yes. are just right, then you don't have enough light at the edges. And if your buds in the middle have less smell and the ones in the outside, just like that tray I showed you a few minutes ago in the video, if you take the buds on the outside and they're leaning in, then you know they don't have enough light. So you're looking for this finesse balance. And what I'm going to ask you is, tell me about your canopy. Does it look, let me, uh, let me, I would like to know if it looks like this. Um, wait, let me find the picture. I probably won't be able to see the picture because it's such oh. a delay on your video. <laughs> oh, no, I'm actually, uh, um, we should be able to, uh, it should be like a uh, three second maybe, four seconds. Do you see the picture oh. I just put up? Okay. No, not yet. Oh, okay. Tell me about the top of your canopy. Is it is the top of your canopy automatic uh, or is it like even? Uh, now I see the, the picture. Uh, the, the top of my canopy, uh, it's it's pretty pretty okay. It's just at the very end when I'm trying to get the thing is shifting is when I start screwing it up. You know, um, the middle the middle the, the very middle inner circle those are the the best buds that that grows totally by far. Uh, sometimes I may get a couple on the corners where, you know, uh, where the lights reflect or so, but, um, yeah, the canopy is kind of okay. I do get out and sometimes it do, does get in trouble, but, mm, okay. but pretty okay. So that it's not, it's not perfect. I have to say that. Okay. Let's put a value on it. It could it be 10% better, 20% mm -hmm. better. 50% better? How much could you improve upon that canopy? I'll say, I'll say maybe 30%. There's always something I want to do to it, you know? Right. Um, well, in and, of, and let me also say this one more thing. Part, more, my biggest problem is getting, like you say, I need to get out, stay out of that friggin' closet. <laughs> let me get out of my way. That's also probably one of my bigger problems. No, 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 no. I think I'm. Uh, I think I'm going to give you the same sort of advanced advice I gave the last guy who just called. And sir, I don't need to fix your garden. What you need to do is have a little more finesse. And I think I can describe mm. this finesse to you. See, do you, with one more question, do you have a bud in every top? In every square, do you have a bud? In every square. Oh, I don't do. I don't put it. Uh, I don't put it in a trellis or anything like that. It's pretty much free hanging, and it's probably what I should do, huh? Okay. So I'm going to give you some finesse advice. 
and it's this. I would suggest that you consider your light a 450. I would also suggest that because the buds in the middle are different than the buds in the end and the outside, and because you are more pleased with the buds in the middle, I would suggest that you put your light in two spots or you buy a light mover, which is one of the things I always tell you about an LED. First off, you're going to have to put, you're going to have to put your canopy in a trellis. You're going to have to get it under control. If you improve your canopy 50%, you will go from eight ounces to 11, almost 11 ounces. That's just 30% increase in canopy, 30% increase in yield. I also believe that <clears throat> You have too much light in one space. Um, I think that you should either position your light, you know what I mean, like hang a magnet off one side so it leans this way, and lean, like what you do with a hood. But I would definitely say that you should keep your garden in a three by four channel. So in terms of, I believe that you're going to have to, you might possibly raise your light. You might possibly do that. Mm -hmm. But I would definitely say mm -hmm. the garden shape. What kind of dog? Mm -hmm. oh, a little mutt. I'm sorry. Sweet. Sorry about that. No, no, no. I got my dog. She gets a little excited. <laughs> I would definitely, I would definitely keep the shape long over wide. Mm -hmm. I would not do a square because LEDs okay. don't work it like that. Um, I would I would really consider mm. either moving it on a light mover or putting it here one day and maybe on the other side of your closet the next. And you're just going to have to spread that light See, out. Uh, even, even in a small five-foot space, I can, I can put in a light mover in that small space? I'm suggesting that if the buds in the middle are different than the buds in the edges and you like uh -huh. the buds in the middle, I'm suggesting that you both shrink mm -hmm. your garden and you spread the light out. Okay. I mean, that's one of the main okay. things you always hear me say about LEDs. They're too intense. So you would either physically yeah. move the light or you would zing, 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 zing. Plus, you've got a little 450. You don't really have a 600. So we're going to shrink the grow mm -hmm. area. We're going to, mm -hmm. we're going to shrink, shrink, the, shrink the spread into a 3 by 4 shape. That's as big as you're going to grow. Mm -hmm. We're going to raise the light because mm. you're going to have to spread it out over a little greater area, right? I mean, right now in your garden, your mm. light looks like uh... mm. right now. What I show you in the book is LEDs are really intense. You can see how intense they are. H HID lights mm -hmm. spread their light out more. The combination is great. I'm not saying LEDs don't increase things in the bud and don't change the bud. All I'm saying is if you don't have the base grow, uh -huh. the LEDs can't change anything. Now, when you look at this picture here, you can see that the LED right. is really concentrated. So the idea is yeah. to move it, and that really helps spread out that light. And I don't care if you buy a light mover or you physically move it to two different mm -hmm. spots. We, we know that you can't move the plant. So I would suggest rather than putting the light directly in the middle, you might put the light, you know, literally here and here, and then the little bit of overlap will always be in the middle and you'll be able to spread that light out over mm. a greater distance. So I believe- A quick that, question for you yes, then. Sir? If uh, if I move, if I physically move it, because it's actually pretty easy for me to move it, cause it's hanging off the ceiling, and I can just put another string and move, pull it to the side real quick. Uh, would would I would you saying just do, do it every other day? Move it either one end one day, or do it, should I do it twice a day, or what? You know, I may not be able to tell you exactly how often a, a light mover does it all day long. Okay. All I'm suggesting is that you. you understand the concept of dividing the light because you're taking one gear. Okay. This is one gear, all three LEDs are on, you're at 450 watts, all yeah. three lights are on, you have a choice. <clears throat> do you apply all of the light to yeah. one section okay. or do you divide it up over two sections? Now what we're talking about is running okay. seven gear 
out into 5,900 and chirping it into third? Or are we talking about shifting at 2,100 and looking at the gas mileage? That's something that you're going to have to play with. I'm never, you know, I'm uh, depending on the, yeah. I mean, listen, yeah. if you found a light mover on uh, Craigslist for a hundred bucks, I'd say use a light mover. Got it. Right. Got it. So that's something. Plus it's fun. A light movers are fun, man. Your lights all ding, 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 ding. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll be honest. I, I was a little intimidated like your previous, uh, previous caller, you know, it's just, I was thinking this might get too complicated, but I think I'll give it a shot. But you see what I'm getting at, though. I believe that if you were to take this 8-ounce, and instead of 16-ounce, we lower our expectation to 12-ounce, and we increase the canopy plus 30%, right there, we're at, what, so one-third of that's, let's say, three, so that's 11 ounces. And then if you get a better crop, like because you now have a lower canopy and you move, you position your light. I mean, even if dividing the light up over a greater area gets you one ounce, you are in the zone. And that is a rare position because, because I started off by checking my usual boxes with, with here and, and, I mean, you've ended up uh, the CFL for grow. I'm never a fan of CFLs, especially if you're going to grow in the fastest system. The CFL is silly. Mm. However, if I remove this one statistic, mm. dude, you are killing it. Yeah. Yeah, I thought I was it. <laughs> I think you were. Oh, thank you. All right. Excellent, because again, as I said, I all I see is stuff online. It's like everything is like ridiculously so crazy. Let me, let me ask: um, you, How many times have you run this system? Uh, I ran it. Uh, I would say about four or five times. Okay. How many did you get uh, a harvest every time? I'm sorry. Did you get a harvest every time? Uh, no, one, one harvest I lost, uh, but, but basically it was in the beginning, it was just crap. I mean, it was good stuff, but it just wasn't a quantity. And now after listening to you and following these things, thank you very much, sir. Uh, I'm going way more than I need, <laughs> <laughs> but nevertheless, no, what's this? And you did it with an LED. You, sir, are in the 1% club. Yeah. 3%. When you get the weight you're supposed to, yeah. you'll be in the 1%. And but remember, because... Oh, you I'm still the, trying to... Because you didn't have the smell in your bud, that was the clue that the light was too close. Mm -hmm. So if you raise the light, shape it up okay. a little, change your expectations for what you have, and I'm going to say that, that you're going to knock it out of the fucking park next time. What I would also like to point out to you... Oh, Thanks. And, yes, sir. And go ahead and... Uh, Send me an email and I will uh, hook you up with something. But, but what I'd like to point out to you guys once again is that was five times. When you come into my store, when the piggies come into my store with a fistful of fucking money and a handful of seeds and they look at me and they say, I got to move in 60 days. If I spend my rent money, if I spend my moving money on a light, you think I can get my rent money in 60 days? And I'm like, he's got his rent money in his hand. He's got his seeds in that hand. And it takes 90 days to start a seed, bed, flower. I reach out and I take their money and I look at you and I say, yes, you can. And I will take that money from you. Why? Because it's hopes and dreams. In almost all cases, here at the Hydro Store, we sell hopes and dreams. Because there are very, very few paths to successfully growing cannabis. And so I just want you to understand whether you come in with that piggy attitude or you're dressed like man bear pig or you stink or you're <coughs> coughing in my face. All of those things represent all of the details in your life because you probably do that everywhere. You're talking to someone, you all 
All, all I'm suggesting is that there are so many things to help in your personal life that growing may be the last thing that you're capable of. And so I'm the Grow Boss. I just wanted to thank all of you for listening and my sponsors like Green Pad and Great White, Clonex, Ushio, Mondi, Thermoflow. These are the guys that sponsor all my videos, Light Rail. You know, these are the things that really, really help blow your shit up. And I can prove it to you, I'll show you it on when we do the Great Root Race. That's what all these trays are for. And of course, if you have any questions, I have a hotline, you can call me before you quit. And if you want the $69 Grow Boss Kit, it comes with the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. Marijuana Garden Tracker, because you and I both know you're not gonna remember everything for next time. That's why the Marijuana Garden Tracker. Gardens and Grow Rooms, a book full of examples, so and shopping lists, so you know exactly what you need. I got a bunch more stuff too. Uh, yeah, get the bong and the coffee out of the way. The No More Grow More cards. We just got the new set with a bunch of new advertisers. Ah, you can't even. Anyway, they're super nice, the No More Grow More cards. And of course, depending on what package you get, we also have super fun stickers. We've got the Made for Marijuana sticker. We've got uh, the Call Before You Quit Me Garden Hotline, Clonex sticker, the No More Grow More cards. We always ship a couple of these to tempt you into buying the No More Grow More pack. And that's what we sell for $69 plus shipping. We've got some other fun stuff. Here's everything you need to know about Thermoflow and Check that out. That's Mondi with the humidity domes and the tips and tricks on cuttings. That's uh, Nickel City Bad Boy and how much light you need for veg and flower Clonex for your clones. Of course, we include the Grow Diamond on a you know separate little cart for you to look at, and the troubleshooting guide with the uh, with the only five questions you ever need to ask, and all about nutrients. And so there you go. That was my piggy burp for you. Oh my God, it drives me, customers drive me fucking crazy sometimes. All right, I'm the Grow Boss. This show is Cannabis Hotline. It's, uh, it's on at uh, weekends at 9 a.m. And I always try to give the callers something. And you know, the vendors want me to give out as much shit as possible. I mean, they can't, uh, they can't give it out as fast as, <laughs> as, fast as, as fast as they want to. So if you have any questions, you can catch me tomorrow here from 9 to 10 again. But I've got a customer standing outside the door at the moment staring at me. And so it's time to end the show. I hope it's been helpful. I hope it saves you money, increases your grow. And if you're like that vet that sent me that letter, if there's something I can do, I'll try. Have a good day. Oh, so this one.